So our next artist is Ekaterina. Born in Kazakhstan and of Russian descent, Ekaterina is a versatile singer and multi-instrumentalist. She plays percussion, Merlin, Zaleka, and recorder. Ekaterina's unique voice encompasses a range of sounds from the traditional ritual singing of Eastern Europe to Western classical and early music, often entwined with contemporary and alternative music genres. Successfully completing her Bachelor of Fine Arts with honors, specializing in music at York University, Ekaterina immersed herself in the traditions of the Balkans, East Slavic cultures, and the Near East. The sonic landscapes of these sounds can be heard in the repertoire of her current ensembles Blisk and Meden Glas. Symbiosis of traditional elements and alternative music are found in her work with other groups such as the folk metal band Protocult, Russian folk fusion band BM13 Katyusha, and the world music contemporary ensemble The Collide Project. Here's a Katerina. <laughs>
Thank you for these beautiful songs, Ekaterina. We're just wondering if you could tell us a little bit about these gorgeous songs you just sang. Sure. Um, these are uh, two Russian songs. It's a medley. I chose uh, the first a cappella song is just a working uh, sort of a harvest um, song uh, from the repertoire of Olga Sergeyeva. It's a really famous Russian folk singer and um, uh, just a working song um, the, that would uh, help, I guess, the, the people to, to, to move with the flow of work and the second one is the re uh, it's a recruitment song so it sort of talks about the sorrows of having your beloved being recruited to the army and uh, they will take him away and they will cut off his golden locks wow powerful <laughs> powerful and beautiful and, um, you know, we would love to hear about your journey into music. How did you, how did you start this journey uh, with learning music? How did this begin for you? Um, learning music it, it started in Canada, actually. I, it, it was later on in life that I decided to devote my uh, time to mu learning music academically. Uh, but before, of course, I sang back home, just in choirs and for fun in family gatherings. Uh, at the age of 16, I came to a studio called Castle of Music of Luba Shalev. So uh, I started doing a lot of classical, uh, Broadway, jazz. I was throwing all these genres at me. Um, and later on, with the help of that instructor, I uh, got into York University, where I decided to study world music. And actually, I studied with Judith Cohen, who happens to be on the program today. Hi, Judith. Um, so I studied world music and early music with Judith, as well as I got into the Balkan ensemble of Irene Markov. And Irene really got me singing in a very old style of uh, traditional village style of voice. So I had to really relearn all the technique that I've ever have uh, sort of uh, studied in my life before. And um, the journey of uh, rediscovering, rediscovering folklore actually came to me from uh, singing in a metal band. And overall, I was a lot uh, into the metal scene and uh, devoted 10 years of my life. And what happened is all these artists started mixing in folk music into it and developed, uh, developed a genre of folk metal. So from there also, I learned that there's all this repertoire of folklore that I have not heard before. Growing up as a kid back in Kazakhstan, we've sang mostly popularized folklore or national folklore, what they, they, they it was called. And, um, and later on, through metal artists and uh, through studies of York University with uh, beautiful instructors, what I've discovered is that there is a whole genre of folklore that, that goes into the village, and uh, it, it's particular to the region, to the style. So it just, it's just like a whole another layer of uh, folklore I've never heard before. And I decided to de dedicate my life to studying that. And right now, my goal is to spread it, I guess, uh, to as many people as possible through not only, recon I don't want to reconstruct, I want to adapt, uh, I want to learn it, and I want to adapt it into a new, um, into new ways of sort of communication, whether it's through rock or any other popular music genres, just want to do uh, fusion. So you've mentioned already that you've been involved in a Balkan ensemble and in folk metal. Uh, can you tell us about some of the projects that you, you have underway and that you're working with? Because I know you're doing so many different things that are really very, uh, very different from each other. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about some of those. Sure. Uh, I do have, for now, four projects going on. And um, two of them are uh, related to folk and traditional music. One of them, uh, through the Balkan Ensemble, actually, we formed, um, after graduation, we formed uh, Ensemble Medan Class 
along with Irene Markov, who was our is our instructor and the band leader, as well as uh, all the students that were there studying the, the Balk tradition from the Balkan singing. So Met and Glass, we sort of do a big journey through the Balkans, but also go beyond into Russia and Italy and uh, Turkey and etc. Uh, another project uh, is, um, is fairly recent, a couple of years that was formed. It's called Blisk. And we've teamed up with ladies from numerous uh, uh, numerous projects as well. It's like a super group of women. <laughs> and, and we have um, singer and dancer Stefania Voloshin from Lemon Bucket uh, and Anastasia Y from uh, Ensemble Dovira, as well as Evelina Ferenc from uh, the Ensemble Polki. So what we do is we also fuse and mix uh, Slavic music, um, of, uh, whether it could be Polish or Russian or Ukrainian. So we try to set them to different interesting rhythms and sort of, again, be, fuse and be, go beyond sort of uh, the traditional folk. My third project has been my longest and uh, dedicated about 10 years of my life to the metal. <laughs> and this project is called Protocol. Um, we also just sort of fuse a lot of folk, uh, but uh, a lot of drinking songs and very entertaining kind of fun uh, live uh, band to be in. And we're coming up with a new album very, very soon. So uh, excited for that. And finally, my fourth project is uh, called uh, Katusha Bem Trinasit, which is actually it's, it's named after the rocket launcher in World War II. It's BM-13, literally called Katusha. <laughs> and that was for it was that was formed for the Russian community specifically, uh, which is what I would be trying to do is to get this folklore um, yeah, kind of more uh, um, more to the people, I guess, because they are not very familiar with the traditional music from the villages. Uh, sometimes they even say it's not sounding Russian. So I'm here to uh, kind of spread the word. <laughs> Great. Wow, what an amazing array of projects you have going on. And it's so exciting to hear about each of these. And they're all so different and they're all so exciting. So also curious, um, you also do sing Kazakh folk songs and uh, just curious about, I know you grew up in Kazakhstan, but uh, yeah, would love to hear about your journey into that music as well. This is, uh, I how to say, so this is sort of a culture that I've grew up alongside with. So once I moved out, it uh, all of a sudden felt like it was um, it's part of me as well because I grew up with it but I don't speak Kazakh language I studied it very little in school but I do remember how to pronounce it and I do have a feel for it when I sing I, at least I think so and uh, it just happened randomly actually in Sambal Topaz he invited me to do some Kazakh songs and I started looking into it and the song I'm gonna Play actually today, um, I've discovered it in a compilation of uh, field recordings, and uh, it was collected uh, in nearby my city sometime. Uh, and it's a wedding song. Uh, it talks about the wedding ceremony opening up like a feast, and how the gracious host is giving presents to the guests, and just dreams come true, and there's big celebration. Well, thank you so much, and uh, we are really looking forward to hearing your next song, and uh, thank you so much for joining us, Katerina. <laughs> Thank you. 
for having me. Stay safe and healthy and take care. Thank you very much to Ekaterina. Beautiful songs from Kazakhstan, from Russia, and we are so glad that we were able to hear you perform. Our final performance today is by Ensemble Topaz co-artistic director and Global Rhythms Live co-host Paramita Kar. Paramita holds a PhD in dance studies from York University and currently works as a full-time dance artist with a base in Toronto and also traveling internationally throughout Canada. Originally from India and trained in classical Indian dance from a young age, Paramita's journey with several diverse world dance forms began in Toronto when she was studying at the York University Dance Department. She has performed in Canada, United States, India, Netherlands, and Czech Republic. She is performing today a Kurdish contemporary theatrical dance piece. Her dance aesthetic in Kurdish contemporary dance is the, uh, the she danced under the mentorship and the direction and choreographic vision of pioneering Kurdish dance choreographer and ethnomusicologist Fatih Karakacheli, under whom she had the honor of working with at Dilan Dance Company. This piece is set to the traditional music by the Kamkars.
ਨਾਮ ਸੇ ਬਾਰੀ ਕੁਝ ਰਹਿ ਕੇ ਕੁਝ ਰਹਿ ਕੇ ਕੁਝ ਰਹਿ ਕੇ ਨਾਮ ਲਜ਼ਾਰੀ ਸ਼ਾਬਾਦੀ ਨਾਮ ਸੇ ਬਾਰੀ So um that was me I was performing a piece called Khusha Hauraman um I'd like to mention this style is uh it's definitely interpretive but drawing on uh Fatih Karakachelli's pioneering work into theatricalizing aspects of Kurdish dance um he So Fatih Karakachelli is this amazing Kurdish choreographer, ethnic ethnomusicologist, um and just amazing scholar and resource on uh Kurdish all aspects of Kurdish culture, but most especially music and dance and I've had the honor of working with him for several years. I met him the first time when we were both studying our masters at York University dance department. and uh yeah and i've just had the honor of working with him several years since then and especially in his dilan dance company and the company is currently has been on hiatus for a few years now uh but he does continue to do excellent uh research on the theories and backgrounds of kurdish heritage uh cultures and dances and um there's something very interesting about the way he approaches um Kurdish dance in its traditional context because Kurdish dance is most often a group dance and uh then there is this theatrical aspect uh which is kind of what you saw me perform here in this particular piece and his approaches are very very different so in the work that he creates for soloists um it's very individualized it's built towards showcasing the strengths of that specific dancer versus in the group pieces it really draws much more upon the heritage of the dances and the traditional folklore um so a very exciting choreographer and um i'm deeply deeply honored to have had the opportunity to work with him the dress i wore in this piece comes from diyarbakir in turkey um i was there in 2015 under a canada council for the arts grant and i studied actually under some of fatih's students at the dishle university uh, state conservatory dance department and this dress uh was created by a beautiful dressmaker and costume designer that um that who has a uh shop called memozine which is named after this tragic and beautiful kurdish love story and um and the scarves you saw me use were gifted to me by her and so i it was gifted with love so how could i not use that in the dance so and kurdish dance even in its traditional context has a tradition of dancing with scarves it's just done somewhat differently than how i've used it in the piece um yeah i guess that's all i i have to mention <laughs> for it um but yeah incredible incredible dance resource fatih karakachelli and um yeah very honored to have worked with him well thank you so much parmita and thank you so much for joining us today we hope you enjoyed today's edition of global rhythm world music and dance digital concert streamed from the living rooms of our artists and studio topaz here in our living room 
Please support our artists by going to the GoFundMe page and making a donation. In the coming weeks, we'll feature artists from across the world performing traditional and innovative artistic material. Please stay updated by following our Facebook page as well as Instagram at Ensemble Topaz, where you will also find links to the wonderful artists who joined us today. You can also go to our YouTube page and subscribe to our channel. We thank you for joining us in this journey today and hope that you will join us in the future.